Kelly. I'm Rich. And we are One of Us Adventures. This week we have made some huge progress with our van kitchen build. Before we get into it, let us just go over some of the preparation that we had to do before we can build the cabinets. A few weeks ago, the cabinets were designed. From this, we chose wood and used OptiCutter to show us the most optimal way to cut the wood. We sent this to the timber merchant. They put it in their software, cut it, and it arrived on a big lorry. Fast forward to now, and we're ready to build the cupboards. But first, there's a couple of things that I needed to finish off on the van's plumbing. Here's a two minute update of what we had to consider. Sunday morning, it's very sunny and it's very untidy out here. I'm just gonna do a couple of little bits left on the plumbing so down here we've got our eye mass water heater i'm going to run my pipe along here along the floor got a tea piece there ready to go off with into the shower another dropout vent was required here that's in now gas pipes in check valves in use a bit of a flexible hose here to save our to have another join and i need another piece for my drawn guest to bring down to my hot water all of this is going to be underneath the shower here will eventually make sure it's protected, but it's gonna be underneath the sofa. I am waiting for a few more bits to arrive so I can finish off the water and gas on this side. Whilst we're doing that, because we are wanting to progress, we're going to make our kitchen cabinet. So I'm just gonna clear this out. And I took the time to run the cable for our fridge and our cooker. Amazing what a few P clips can do, isn't it? All right, so we're making decisions on where and how our kitchen will be laid out. Now, the way that I've drawn it and the way that I've, all, I've designed it. Let me just stop myself here. As I go into lots of detail about making a decision about where our oven was going to go. Honestly, this is one of the biggest learnings when you're building a van, you spend more time planning and thinking I'm doing the actual thing sometimes and that's that's fine. That's absolutely fine. Okay, we've discussed it at length, like yeah. even more at length. Like it's 10 o'clock at night now. <laughs> We're gonna put the oven at the end. It's directly under the fan, access is better, and it means that we've got sort of an extra 30 centimetres worktop space on the top. So that's what we're gonna do. So the next thing I'm gonna do is try and bend this horrific gas pipe in and around and then have a think about where the wastewater and stuff's going to come out to and the non-glamorous stuff that no one talks about. No, all the boring stuff that you don't really think about it always takes the longest and you don't then at the end you don't see it but it's important. Very important, <laughs> yeah. yeah very important. So I'm going to crack on with that pipe now. So the other day when I tried to bend this one I went from the back and tried to work my way in. I'm going to try and work from the front and work my way back and actually this worked much better and allowed me a real straight run to the back and then to bend around in the garage. Victory is mine. I've got that pipe bent in and around all the way back to the isolator at the back. Um, and I've got the tail up here ready to come into the triplex later on. But we're in a good space now to know where our cabinets are going to go, what we need to cut and how we need to modify them before we start. All right, so the way it's constructed, they all have sides, so I'm not using this as a supporting piece. So I need to cut this one first. As you can see, it's going around this boxed in section. So I'm just gonna go in and cut the piece so it fits around this, and then we're gonna work our way along, scribing each of the uprights. That's gonna be made of poplar ply because it's lighter than the birch stuff. Um, and we're going to have to cut out some big notches to accommodate this at the back too which you won't see and it'll make it a little bit lighter as well so i bought some new blades these are made double-sided clean cutting for laminated worktops so i'm going to give it a go on this i am just going to cut down here and i'm going to use my plunge saw to get along this straight rail uh, before i do that though i'm just going to clean the bottom of this shoe off it looks quite dirty with some panel wipe. Because although you won't see this, and you won't, you won't see this peak panel at all. I don't want to get dirt on the rest of it if I can help it. Alright, you can see it around here. 
what I'm going to do is cut it 25 centimeters up, 7.5 centimeters in, and basically create a big wedge out the back of all of them. It sounds quite dramatic, but it's not going to take away from any of its strength because there's a whole panel there. What it will allow me to do is push it all the way over there without fouling any of that and have room for the waste and everything that's going to come out and in. Then we're going to do the same on the other ones. On this occasion, I used a technique new to me. I used the edge of my plunge saw rail to just guide my jigsaw. All right, so I'm away with my little wooden thingy and I bought one of these. This is like a cheap version of a very popular one. Yeah, I thought it let me do it. I'll never doubt my piece of wood again. Let's go get it. Took a one centimetre scribe. That was deeper than the overall amount, which I'll explain later. And this gave me time to think. What an utter piece of garbage. 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 Well, do you pick that up, After some time lapse pondering, I cut the notches out of the next three boards. Those new blades, so far, would recommend on this poplar. We'll see what it's like on the birch later. Right, let's go scribe these in. And then I began attaching the stretcher pieces. Well, I'm going to screw it together now. On the next one here, I'll show you how I've done it, but I'm putting together the pocket holes. And I've got a new jig actually, and it works really well. Um, the cutout here does look extreme, granted, but we're having drawers and everything in it. You won't ever see it. Um, so I just wanted the access there. And it's not going to take away anything from the strength. Because this is the sink unit, it's going to be carrying the most weight and putting in a fair few stretchers on this to support it. And it's going to be screwed through the floor and into the wall as well. So I don't, I don't know if you remember, but in an earlier video, you, the, up until this point, literally this point here, there's a massive metal beam. So I'm going to make sure that the batten along the back is over that beam and we can screw this one at least through into it. The rest of them, see where these two screws here, that corresponds with a smaller piece of angle iron and a wooden batten. So again, they're going to be screwed through all the way along and down into the floor. Curing with the pocket holes was dead straightforward and really strong. I was really impressed with how tightly they grip and just how rigid this made the whole unit. Okay, so first one, I've got it mocked up here. When I use OptiCutter, this is the only board that I couldn't get in grain direction. So I might recut that one if I've got a spare piece in the garage. But all for all intents and purposes, I think it looks pretty good. So this here eventually is going to be a big pull-out drawer. Um, so I've just got it in here at the moment on some spaces. And inside you can see we've got the top and the bottom where the worktop will attach. We have a stretcher across the back here to screw it to the wall. And I'm going to put another one actually along the bottom here just to keep it from moving apart. And then I can screw that through down into the batten um, for the wheel arches too. So we, we'll have it screwed through the floor, through the wall, into this wall, down through this batten here as well and then they're all gonna be obviously attached together. So scribe the next piece and I'll show you my new jig. Long shanks is here. Hey. I found Woody. Never ever <gasps> distrust Woody again. Okay, I'm just gonna hold this in place. So this. I should be able to get another one. So I'm gonna use the same depth as last time. That way I know the board's going in the same amount as the last one. Woody has been through the washing machine multiple times as well. Still lives to say it's seven or ten from the day. Yeah, right. One thing to point out, so the scribe we took in there was a one centimetre scribe. And we take, I've taken the same one on all of them because I know that that'll be enough to get me into the wall. It's important that I take the same on each one because otherwise the dimension at the top 
will be different on every single side, um, which you don't want. Obviously, you'll have a kitchen that looks a bit like Tetris um, and retro and janky looking. Whereas with this, they'll all be the same. Good, anyhow, let me show you my jig. It's really easy to set up this one. Put the drill bit through, and you can see at the bottom there, you're gonna space that to three millimeters. And the easiest way to do that, they say, is to just use a coin. I have got a washer here. You pop it in, so it's resting on there like so. Basically what you do, you pop your work piece in here. Because you've got the spacer in here, you can see where it's gonna go. Full plunger. It's in there now. And what you do is drill in the guy. See the tracks in it, so the swath comes out. Do the other side. And there you are. And they are dead, dead neat pocket holes there. Much better than the RJ I've got. And I can knock, I can knock these out as quick as you like. So you get these squared head drive screws for the jig. And then they, these sit nicely in here. When they go in, you just know, pull in tight. You do get different sorts, so you get fine thread and you get the coarse thread. And the, the wood that I'm using here, you need the coarse thread. Good, right, okay. And you repeat the process. The unit here is for the fridge, so you, we have a small drawer at the top and a couple of stretches on the back. I built the other units in the same way. Oh, it's the next day. I'm just getting the end board ready. So this is gonna be the oven unit. When I designed all of this and cut it all, I made lots of pieces uniform. So 7.5 centimeters tall. And what this has basically allowed me to do is to like to use them to clamp, use them to space, use them sort of everywhere. The kickboard 7.5, the stretcher 7.5, the bits on the top 7.5. And it's just made it ever so, it's just made it a lot simpler when I've been putting this together because it means that I don't have to measure. I can literally just clamp a piece in here because I know that's 7.5. And planning that in advance has just saved a, a fair amount of time. So what I'm gonna do now is to get the door that's gonna sit in here for the oven and use that to space the shelf that's going in above it. Then I know that the door will go in with well, if it works. I oh, know the door will go in with two millimeters all the way around then. Okay, so we've got it mocked up. All the cupboard fronts and stuff are mocked up just in spaces because these are this is a false one. This is gonna be a big drawer, tiny drawer, Lily's larder, <laughs> drawer. Lily's the fridge at the moment. And then Kel sat where the oven's gonna go. So what we're gonna do next is take all of these out and put them more safely, and we're gonna sand this up and edge band it this is the veneer before we move on though if you could just hit the like button would really appreciate it helps the video get to more people but veneer look but veneer yeah yeah it's really good yeah. yeah. and the matches it's like wood it's not like that much is this it looks like wood tape yeah, yeah it is, it is. It's real wood real wood this is tape 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 Stick it on mommy, she loves it. No. No. <laughs> Meanie. <laughs> the tape is applied with a regular iron on a medium setting. We did several tests using a knife and a cutter that we bought specially for the job. Ah! Oh, it's hot. No, not really. The glue is it's stuck. Yeah, I know. I just fell out with my finger. Touching it if you think it's hard. <laughs> He's like, oh, I broke myself, let me touch it some more. <laughs> oh, yeah, it has squished out, you can see it. Well, I'll let it cool down and then we'll use this testy thing. <laughs> this cutter did turn out to be poor, and in the end, we decided to use a craft knife and we made sure we ironed it with greaseproof paper for the best effect. You can see here the difference. So, at the bottom was with the cutter, and at the top 
was with a craft knife finished off with some light sandpaper so that's the method that we decided to use. First of all we also sanded down these gaps to make sure that they were smooth. That feels very smooth. Good. That bit's kind of very smooth. That's fine, that doesn't matter if that is where the joins are. Because when, we, when the tape goes over it we don't want it to have any bumps. To keep the joints to a minimum we ran the long horizontal length first and then the vertical lengths after and then these gaps will be filled. Like most things, this is taking ages. However, results, early results I should say, are looking good. We've done down this edge. We did along the top. We've done down this edge. But we're getting there with it. I think it's worth doing the veneering. Appreciate most people will just do overlay doors, but we're doing inset doors and we use poplar ply. So this is just what we've been up to. We'll take a closer look at this later. The next thing we need to do though is make the drawer units for this. And to do that, I'm gonna make an upside down homemade homebrew router table. To make the jig, I took a 15 millimeter piece of plywood and a straight piece, screwed it to do the front. And then I screwed another piece behind it to create a sled area for the pieces to be pushed through. And then what I'm gonna do, so I've got the front and the back, and that way, when we screw it together, you shouldn't see the pocket holes because this is gonna be faced and on the back, unless you live behind the unit, in which case you've probably got bigger problems, you aren't gonna see it. The other two larger draw units were cut in the same way, and I added three pocket holes with these because they're gonna be holding more weight, and I decided to glue the joints on these too. The final thing was to add soft close draw runners to each of the three drawers. The carcass is nearly all built now, so here is where the oven's going to be. And then uh, the oven drawer underneath for like pots and pans and things like that. Here's going to be the pantry, this still needs a little bit bit more work, it's not quite finished. Then we've got a little drawer here which is tiny tiny but super cute for all our cutlery. And underneath will be our fridge. And then on the end is going to be our sink and then underneath we've got another huge drawer. We've got loads done this week, we've done plumbing, we've built a carcass, we've built drawers, we've laminated edges. Yeah, we're really pleased with how far we've come and um, we're ready to move on to the next step. We hope everyone has a brilliant week and a long Easter weekend and we will see you soon. Take care guys. One, two, three. Bye! Bye.